It's been a little while, hasn't it? Yikes. Uh, I've been a little busy, uh, mainly uh, redesigning my website. Uh, it's got a dope new look here. Uh, I don't know if it's uh, really too much more aesthetically pleasing, but it is miles ahead of previous versions of my site in terms of functionality and just putting all the content uh, in a place that seems easily accessible. Uh, so I'm very uh, happy with uh, this particular version of my site for, for the first time in, in a very long time. Uh, it's been a while since I've been really happy with uh, a version of my site, uh, but uh, if you want to check it out, uh, feel free to uh, click the card. Uh, now, I actually uh, design my website uh, using Squarespace, uh, so if you want to do the same, feel free to check it out. I'm not paid for by them or anything, I just think it's a dope uh, website creator, uh, and this is coming from someone who hosted my site on my own for a very long time because I didn't want to trust anyone to do it, but trust me, you can trust these guys. I've looked into it. Uh, they do not shut down their sites and very reliable. Uh, but anyways, this is irrelevant. What's important is it's 3.42 a.m., my typical uh, tutorial recording time. I just finished watching the new episode of Game of Thrones uh, and I'm pumped and ready to uh, to make a tutorial. Uh, if Jon Snow can come back to life, can come back from the dead, uh, surely I can return to YouTube after a couple of weeks of not making videos. God damn it. Hey everybody, what's up? It's Mackenzie Criswell here. Welcome back to another new video. Uh, today, uh, we're taking a look at uh, rendering in After Effects. Anyways, rendering. Still a bit tricky. Um, uh, for, for good reason. There's a lot of different uh, tasks that you might need to render for. And for each of those tasks that you might need to render for, there are probably five codecs or render formats that will get you that. So, a bit of a challenge. And so I thought we'd just take a look at some of the programs I use every day, and a few that I don't, and just do some rendering. So I've got this project here, and I just want to mention really quickly, uh, this is a 4K or UHD, it's 3840 by whatever the second number is, 2160, <laughs> I should have known that. Uh, and 20, 24 frames a second, it, I made sure that it was a 4K comp so I could show you how to downscale to 1080p while rendering. Uh, and yeah, so I guess that wasn't really actually that important to tell, but whatever. Uh, so this is kind of a typical render I would be doing. Uh, we've got a number of layers here in After Effects, which actually isn't super relevant. Um, but... Yeah, so we've got a number of effects and animations and a whole lot of stuff going on here. I don't want to uh, bewilder anyone who hasn't used After Effects yet, so we'll just drop this into a new comp and get it looking real simple and nice. Okay, so here is a project we're rendering. Um, probably will look a lot like your first After Effects composition. Uh, if you have, if you're uh, just getting started and wanting to know how to render, uh, so just a couple of layers in my case one. Uh, and so what we'll do is we'll make sure we have our composition selected that we want to render and save real quick. That's always good practice. And then we'll go up to composition, add to render queue. There are a couple of things to get clear here. Adding to a render queue will add the entire composition to a render queue while saving an individual frame has its own option. So we'll actually do that first. We'll save a frame just as a file and we'll get some settings for that here. And then we'll come back here and we'll choose composition, add to render queue. So we'll also be rendering out our video. And if we come to this render queue and we make sure we have it selected, we can hit the a tilde key. And that's right above the tab key on most keyboards. It's like a little squiggly line. It's got a period on there as well. If we just hit that, we can maximize and uh, take a look at the render settings in full view. So in After Effects, 
this is where the magic happens. Uh, there is an option to uh, export to the Adobe Media Exporter, I believe it's called. I don't remember what that app is called. Oh, Adobe Media Encoder. Uh, but that is a topic for something else. So let's go ahead and just kind of expand some of these options here for this frame that we want to save out. And uh, we'll keep this down here minimized <clears throat> for now. So this is the individual frame that we want to save. And there's, there's basically three parts of uh, this render module, I guess we'll call it, in After Effects. The first is just a basic quality setting uh, for pretty much everything. You'll just want to set this to best. Uh, and then there is just a resolution option to render a full resolution, half resolution, third resolution, quarter resolution, or a custom resolution. And this is what I mentioned earlier. Uh, for example, right now, if I set this to full, what you can see is, uh, if we look right here, I'm going to be rendering this frame at 4K, uh, which is what I would want uh, if I'm shooting a YouTube video that I'm going to be able to upload in 4K. But if I'm doing something like recording this tutorial, where I'm recording at 1080p, uh, maybe I only want to render at 1080p. So I might set that resolution to half and render this frame at 1920 by 1080 p uh, and that's a quick way to change the resolution and crop it without putting things into endless additional compositions just to change the resolution size. Uh, that'll get really crazy really fast. Uh, there is also a custom setting here, so keep that in mind. And this just allows you to uh, basically replace an uh, any number of pixels with one pixel. Uh, it doesn't even have to be symmetrical. So... Uh, if I wanted uh, my composition to be a sixth of this 4K resolution, I type in six here. Also type in six on the vertical. And if I hit OK now, you can see I will be rendering now at 360p. So, uh, you know, 2008 YouTube resolution. <laughs> Anyways, I'll go ahead and set this to half. So we'll just be rendering out a 1080p frame. And we're good to go. That's just a kind of a basic setup setting and pretty straightforward. Not a lot to worry about there. Now, the second category is called the output module. And we'll skip over this real quick because that's where most of the action happens. And we'll just come to this output file real quick and go ahead and click on the hyperlink here. And what we'll do is just come to my desktop. And this is where we can set the output path and we can name this whatever we want. So we'll call this single frame. And there is an option always to save individual files in a subfolder. In this case, uh, we'll do that and we'll call this frames. And we'll go ahead and click save. And so now we've set up the output path and we've set up the resolution and the quality. So now all we have to do is set up the format. So as you can see right now, uh, what the single frame is going to be rendering at is a Photoshop file. Now, uh, that is different from a Photoshop layers file, which will incorporate all the layers of the composition into a layered Photoshop project, not just a Photoshop format image that is a composite of all the layers. So... And uh, if you actually want something like that, real quickly, what you'll do is go up to in intro composition, save frame as a Photoshop layers file. And that's a different, and that's a very straightforward, just saving the Photoshop file to a uh, file location. And that's really quick, simple. Uh, so just keep that in mind. But anyways, we don't want to render as a Photoshop file at all. So we'll go ahead and click up here and we get our lovely little uh, output. <laughs> module setting window. Now, uh, real quick, there is a color management window. If you know what's going on in there, feel free to mess with it if you don't, which I'm assuming most people watching a rendering tutorial probably don't, uh, just don't. First option is the format. And as you can see, there are a number of different formats here. Uh, but if you're rendering an image, unless it's in an image sequence, you're doing 3D or something, you're probably going to want a JPEG or a PNG. Uh, I'm hoping everyone is familiar with these two image sequences. Uh, and so for right now, we'll go ahead and choose JPEG or actually we'll choose PNG. Uh, and then if we click format options, we have an option to do kind of the interlaced compression, 
or to do no compression at all, which obviously seems like the way to go with PNGs because the file size is actually smaller, uh, smaller most of the time because I think the file size is smaller. No, the file size isn't smaller. It renders quicker, something like that. It's not a big deal. Render PNGs uncompressed, guys. Well, it. Uh, <laughs> oh yikes. Okay, so <laughs> the next category is the video output, and this is important for a couple of different formats that, and basically when you need to focus on this is when you need to render something with transparency. So if I start uh, right here with just RG, rendering the RGB, what I will get is an image, and if there's any transparency, it will put a black solid background into the back of the PNG image. But it's no real need to because PNGs hold transparency, hold an alpha channel. So what we can do is render RGB plus alpha. Uh, there is also an option to render just an alpha channel, um, which I guess could be helpful for a couple of things. Uh, we'll go ahead and click RGB plus alpha. And we also have an option to control the number of colors it is exporting. That is has to do with the bit rate that the project is at. And if you mix match that, it'll, it has kind of a fail safe and it'll just render at whatever the highest bit rate it can or just the default eight bits. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that too much, uh, but we'll just leave it at millions of colors plus, and that is plus alpha. So we'll be rendering with transparency. There's also a, another uh, section that will allow you to resize directly a, uh, <clears throat> this uh, composition. So instead of rendering at a fraction of the composition, we can actually just reframe, resize to a custom resolution that we want. We can also crop here, uh, crop number of pixels off the top or bottom. And uh, and there's an audio output option and we'll get to that later. But if we go ahead and hit okay now, we have everything set up to render a perfect PNG image out. Uh, and we'll do that in a moment. <laughs> okay, so down here at our video, at our, with the video settings, we'll just kind of try to run through these pretty quickly uh, since we've already gone through the first two options. We won't worry about those and we'll just focus on the output module option. Uh, so we'll render out three versions of this. We'll render out a lossless version, a ProRes or you know common use version if you're on PC. Uh, you might want to download the AVC HD codec and render with that. It'll be the same pro process as rendering with ProRes and I'll leave a link to download the AVC HD codec and then we'll render a web version in H.264 for general web use. So to make sure that that happens, we'll go ahead and hit plus and hit plus right here. And we're essentially just adding extra outputs here. Uh, so the first thing we'll do, so with our first output module, we will render out a lossless version. And you'll, if you see here, when we click on this, the setting is already set to lossless because that's kind of the default that After Effects uses. And what this will do is render a in the QuickTime format uh, using their animation preset, uh, which is a lossless preset. So you won't lose any quality whatsoever. The file size will more than likely be humongous but whatever, uh, that's that's the whole point of rendering something lossless. And there also is an RGB plus alpha option here. And of course, if it's lossless, you won't be losing an alpha channel. So yeah. <laughs> uh, so if we want to render out a lossless file, nothing to mess with. The one thing we do want to do is just check on the audio down here. As you can see, we'll check on the audio, make sure we're rendering a 32-bit audio. Go to the format options, make sure we're of course rendering uncompressed audio to go with our uncompressed video. Uh, and make sure you're rendering a stereo, of course, unless you're Woody Allen and wanna, you know, master an entire film in mono for whatever reason. I don't know. Uh, and we'll go ahead and hit okay. So very easy setup there. Uh, next thing we'll do is go ahead and just render out our web format, because this is what I think most people are here for anyways. Uh, so again, we'll be using the quick time format here in After Effects. And if we go ahead and hop over to format options, we'll open up the huge list of codecs here and we'll choose H.264. This is a general purpose web format that is pretty great. And really there's one thing you wanna focus on here. It is the limit data cap rate here. And I made an entire video I think that was the last video I made before my little hiatus from YouTube, uh, explaining how to figure out what um, value to put in this box, again, in the card section. Uh, but anyways, uh, but what I'll do, go ahead and do is set this to about 8,000 kilobits per second. And 
I'll bring the quality down to 80%, and that's just something I like to do. Uh, and hit OK. And no RGB here. We can render out an alpha channel again. Uh, make sure our audio is on. OK, good 16-bit audio. And since we're in, and since the whole idea of web is to have small file sizes, we will change this audio code codec from uncompressed to something a little more web friendly. Uh, I'm use I use AAC, uh, which I think uh, almost everyone uses. I would recommend it. I think this is the audio codec that most uh, video sharing sites use. Anyways, uh, we'll go ahead and hit OK, and there's our web ready version. And now we'll go ahead and just set up our ProRes version here real quick. So we'll click on lossless here and come to QuickTime. Again, go to format options, choose the Pro, one of these ProRes codecs. Uh, there's a number of these, but the most recently released is ProRes 4444, 44s there. Uh, so we'll just click that. No quality settings, no bitrate compression. It's very, very simple. Uh, this is a great format that I believe Apple created. Uh, there also is an option to render with alpha. Common theme here. Uh, so if you need that, this is great to go. This is just really a great format for general purpose use. This is what I render almost everything in. Uh, it's very high fidelity. Not a lot of quality loss. Manageable file size. I wouldn't say small file sizes compared to the H.264 render that we're doing here but very, very manageable file sizes. Uh, supports 4K, of course, supports um, 1080p. I think most, all, almost all frame rates, it'll handle most of what you throw at it. And if you're on a Mac, as I am, it works incredibly well on OS X and through all of Apple software. If you're a Final Cut user as well, you may not be. So a lot of what I'm saying might be incredibly not important to you. So we'll go ahead and just hit okay after making sure that we're using uh, a another uh, audio compression here. There is an uncompressed version, and there's also a Apple-specific lossless. Whatever, we don't need to compress audio here. And that's it. We have our render queue set up. Uh, just really quick, if you want to see where you're outputting to, there is also a uh, link right here that will open up a finder window with the location that you're outputting to. And when you're ready to output, all you have to do is hit render. And we'll go ahead and start the queue. And there's, of course, options to both pause and stop the render entirely from there on. And that's it. Uh, so <laughs> fairly simple in After Effects. There's a ton of options, but After Effects is really good at making it pretty simple uh, to get a really dope looking intro. Uh, rendered out and ready to go for all my new videos. If you do like that intro, feel free to like this video. If you didn't, let me know about it in the comments. And if you're not subscribed, do that. That's it for now. If you want to see more of my stuff, check it out at maxi.co. Newly redesigned, and it's in a card. The left of the video. Left corner of the video, that area. It's a little eye, it'll pop up. I usually time it so that it pops up right when I mention it. It'll be there. I know you can find it. I'll see you next time.